Samantha Foster, founder, CEO of Lifehouse Projects and the Venus Mastermind. She has over 25 uh, years of experience as a forensic uh, accountant, tax accountant, assistance to small business, and making other people's dreams come tr true. Um, Samantha, welcome to Talking With Kevin. Today I'm going solo. Um, my, my, my son had another commitment which he's setting up for, but it's just you and me today. You know, our topic today stems from a conversation we had earlier on. For those of you that have not gotten a chance to um, get to know um, Samantha, I would say please go to Instagram and look up Samantha Foster and the Life House pro Projects. They're doing some amazing things. But first, we want to talk about understanding nonprofits and business for profit. And you told me there are three common mistakes that most people make and which is the reason why most nonprofits fail. And um, we're going to learn how to correct those. So, um, Samantha, I know I gave a little bit of, about you. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself, what Lifehouse, Lifehouse Projects is, and what Venus Mastermind is? Thank you, Kevin, for having me here. So it's this pleasure. So Lifehouse Project, well, who I am, as you already introduced me, so... Um, I've been in the business world for a lot of years. I went in, I cleaned up companies, I cleaned up their books, I've trained their staff. Um, I've done a lot of forensic accounting. And if anybody doesn't know what that is, I go snuff out the wrong numbers and catch the bad guys. Um, and that was quite fun. Some of it a little bit dangerous um, because uh, you know, you're know you messing with people's lives, right? And possibly, and actually, some of them have gone to jail. So with that, um, I have moved up into um, the corporate uh, field as a company controller, setting up their policies and the procedures and really um, fine tuning their books or setting up their whole accounting department and system. I pivoted from that after 25 years into owning now my own business and I opened up a nonprofit. And what I have found in the nonprofit world was definitely they were not running the nonprofits as a business. They have been misinformed and there's been a lot of mistakes made that is very detrimental to nonprofits. So I've taken what I've learned personally and even my own failures and put it into Venus Mastermind. And under one of the segments of Venus Mastermind is birthing your own genius. And this is all about correcting those mistakes that nonprofits make and for profits so that they can succeed um, financially as well as in their business. Well, there are a lot of people and I've come across a lot of the people, especially in Clubhouse and then open conversations. Everyone seems to have a nonprofit. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, when you and I first had this conversation, I had gotten a phone call um, from a friend that was um, in a frantic state because she didn't know if she was to close down her, her, her nonprofit or not because it just wasn't working. And when you brought up, there are three common mistakes people um, make. Um, the light bulb went off in my head. What is the first big problem that most nonprofits make? You may have addressed it a little bit earlier, but let's go into a little bit more detail. So if someone is thinking about um, creating a nonprofit, we know that the reason why people do anything because they believe that day and that moment that this is their passion and this is the direction they want to go, go into. But what's what's the first landmine that they step on and how to avoid that? Yeah, the very first landmine, I'll have to take, say that this is for nonprofits and for-profits is a business plan. It's a sound business plan. It's not a quick and dirty business plan. You really need to think about all factors in your business, including your market, including the industry, including your products and services, and, and in a way of explaining to investors, explaining to people why your service is even needed and, and how it can help them, right? It's all about creating money for other people. And even in a nonprofit world, 
it's all again, all about that return of investment. So people really don't take a business plan seriously. Either they do a quick and dirty one, um, which doesn't have a lot of details in it, or they just don't have one at all. So I find that to be the number one biggest mistake for nonprofits and for profits. All right, I, I'm hoping people are listening because I'm actually taking notes my, myself because there's some things that I, I, I want to do um, going forward with RMK Productions as well as my partners. Um, point two, what's the next big uh, mistake that people make that's common? Yeah, this is a, probably going to surprise people, but it's actually the webpage. <laughs> <laughs> so people don't want to keep going to the same boring webpage where there's no interaction, right? It's not um, up to date. It's not current. The pictures don't change. You don't want it too busy, right? You want it easy um, for people to read. You want it that... that um, you want it to be appear as, or not appear, let me get the right word in here. I apologize. You want them to stay. And I think they call it, a, you know, be sticky, where they don't want to leave it because it's entertaining, but it's comfortable at the same time. So it appeals to those basic needs and those basic senses. So I think that's really, really important in a web page. But nonprofits, especially, they don't really spend the money and the time on, in that marketing department in how their, um, their web page actually looks. And people get bored. They don't want to stay. The donate button's not easily accessible. And people don't know why they're donating. All of this needs to be on there. Complete transparency. Um, all your data needs to be on there, but in a way that's easy for the reader to, to look at it in five seconds and they know what's going on, what's happening, where the dollar is going to, and it's entertaining at the same time. So people are missing this. This is huge. I, I think that's an important uh, point. It kind of falls a little bit into my, my wheelhouse because our company actually, um, for our podcasters and um, our content creators, we actually have um, access to develop and create um, websites for, for people. And what Samantha said for our listeners, need to keep in mind, there are a lot of people out there that they charge a lot of money in order for you to have a website. My suggestion would be go and look at websites that um, wow you, that leave you on the on the landing page um, for about two minutes or so and make sure everything's accessible. Your landing page has to read like a opening chapter to a good book and it, it wants you to turn the page. Your mission statement and your purpose has to be clear. So I think Miss Samantha that was excellent um, advice, and I will say that if anyone is uh, in the position that they don't know before you actually spend a dollar or a dime, I would say reach out to uh, rmkproductions.net and um, have a conversation with us. Even though you may not use us, um, we can direct you in there. So I want to go through the third, and I know these are a lot more other steps on how to fix them because we're going to talk about how to get access to all of this knowledge you have because I understand that you do have a uh, workshop and uh, I will definitely be uh, attending and hopefully some of my listeners will also be reaching out to you. Um, three. Number next three. Landmark. Um, yeah, one of the other biggest mistakes and this is very, uh, actually this could be also for a for-profit is a data conundrum. This is what we call it, data conundrum. And what it is, is that we don't gather the data that we need to see how successful our programs and services are. And the one thing that um, people do, the consumer, as well as um, people who sponsor nonprofits and donators, they want to see where, how their dollar is being spent, what and the results of that dollar. And same with the consumers. Before we buy something, do we not want to know we, um, or have that proof that this is actually working? Um, so I think that's really important, but people don't spend the money on that or spend the time gathering that type of data. That means you're following up with consumers. That means that you're, you know, you're following um, your programs through each and every person, um, the beneficiaries that you have through your nonprofits. You've got to gather this data. You've got to have the platform to keep it so that you can have, be very transparent with it and dump it back on your website. 
Um, again, this is just a really integral part of um, having that website where people can have those numbers and that data accessible. Investors like to see data. This is research. This is proof. I know it's not fun, but it's necessary. You got to do it. Kevin, you're on mute. I, I will say this, just the three steps that you just mentioned, um, extremely important. And I know that there, there's a lot more steps and I, I don't want to give away um, the, the whole program um, directly on, on this podcast interview because I, I, I know one thing, I've, I've learned one thing from playing organized sports. You can give them the playbook, but unless you can execute what's on the pages, then it's just ink on a, on a piece of paper and people need to understand this. So tell me a little bit more about and tell our listeners and I want everyone to, if you can, I know you're pulling into Starbucks someplace to get your, um, your morning coffee, a late night snack, or you just picked up your kids and you're, you're kind of listening to this right now because you've always been thinking about this. Um, the, um, your next pro project, the workshop that you're doing, Tell us how that works. Tell us how we get in touch with you uh, and tell us what, what we should expect. So um, my next project that I'm opening up and launching here really soon is called Birthing Your Genius. And this is very specific to the business plan that I was describing earlier. And to uh, it, it really is all about bringing you step by step by step because I know that business planning can be um, overwhelming. When you're looking at, oh my gosh, this can be 100, 150 pages, it could be that, um, absolutely, depending on your services, it can be overwhelming. So I'm going to bring you through it in a very logical manner. Uh, because I've been through the process more than once, um, there's a certain way to go through a business plan so it's easier. And it's so necessary, though, as I said, without the business plan, you don't have a business because you didn't do your research and you didn't do your homework. So my first um, launching of the products um, will definitely be birthing your genius. Um, and I'm sorry, Kevin, what was your uh, other question? Uh, that, that's OK. I, I just Can wanted to know. This? Go, going that's that's okay I, I i go through this all the time you i i have brain farts all the time doing the <laughs> interview but you know the course that you're you're, you're putting together um is it going to be an online course is it going to be something um, personal because i know with COVID right now we, we we're not going to be able to do that is there a website that we can reach you at in order to register for this and if you can do those i'll i'll make it real real simple so is it a two week course five week course how, how does that work? So it, it's going to be probably around more of a, like a 20 week course. We are talking about a very extensive business planning. I'm going to offer two, um, two different formats. We can do it on um, where I will have it as an online course and you can go and purchase each section um, when you're ready as you're going through it. Or I will also be um, throwing in coaching sessions where I'll be online with you twice a week helping you through each of the sections. Um, so they're both can be priced um, not expensive, um, but they'll, they'll be qual it'll be quality. So you're really going to get your money's worth and then some. The website is www.venusmastermind.com. That's where you can sign up for the courses, the links, um, and contact me at. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I, I will tell you personally, I've gotten an extreme amount of information um, from Mrs. Foster and Miss Foster. And it is so worth the investment. I always tell people before you start anything, you've got to be the first person to invest in your own project. So if, if you skimp on uh, the first step, you will stumble over two, three, and four, and you will go ahead, and those first three things that we mentioned um, in this uh, interview or this conversation, you will fall victim to all three, all right? And we're trying to make sure that if you create a nonprofit or a nonprofit for-profit, that you don't stumble on any of the first three steps. And the other access to the other programs, you have to go ahead and register. It is so worth it. I'm already uh, registered with her. It's a program 
that even with the personal coaching, which she's assisting me with on RMK Productions, and she will soon be a podcaster within RMK Productions, so that's something yet to come. Now, Samantha, if I can call you by your first name, our, our listeners are, especially when they see you, they're all going to fall in love with you because you are just uh, a wonderful, authentic, uh, caring human being. What would you like our listeners to take away from this interview? The most important thing to take away from this interview is that if you love what you're doing, if you love your idea, if you love your business, then you will spend the time it takes to make sure that is a success. Again, reiterating that so many people don't do that business planning because it's extremely difficult. It's hard. It's tedious. Um, it's not the funnest thing in the world to do. But if you really want your dream to come true and manifest it, you'll do that homework. This is the difference between succeeding or not. It's what you put into it. It's always our own choice. Our world is in our own hands. I think that's a great piece of advice. And I hope people have ingested this. Hopefully that you've taken this conversation and like a fine wine, let it sit on the back of your, your tongue before you, you swallow and let all the flavors hit the, all the, um, the sensation points on your tongue and then let your brain go, wow, that aha, aha was it aha moment as they would say? and let it happen. But ask you one more question. And I ask this pretty much of 90% of everyone that's ever been a guest on Talking With WIT, Kevin and Son. If you had one ask, A-S-K, one ask, and one of my listeners, okay, because I have a very strong following of people with a sense of call to action. Our listeners, they don't drive by an accident they pull over to see if they can help so I want you to take a couple seconds and I want you to think about it and I want you to dream big all right what would that one ask be Miss Samantha the one ask is donations for the life house project we need donations every nonprofit does and we're looking for that one big investor that is really ready to make a difference in the world. So if you can go to the website, www.lifehouseproject.org and donate, that would be my one big ask. I'm, I'm going to tell you, Sam, I am so glad you put that out there because we've covered a lot of information. And I hope that something that we've said, that you've listened to in this conversation, or you've connected, for those of you that are watching this on YouTube, have connected with Ms. Foster, that you would like and share um, this interview. All right, because we all have someone that's, that's doing this one thing. You can go to our YouTube page, RMK Productions and Network. Remember, RMK Productions and Network on our YouTube page and subscribe. The other thing, if you want to reach out directly to us, you can reach info at RMK Productions with an S, net, and reach us directly. And Samantha, how do people get in co contact with you? Info at lifehouseproject.org, and my team will filter all the emails and we'll get what's necessary to me or pitch you to the person that can help you. So info at lifehouseproject.org. Samantha, we appreciate you. Um, we respect you. RMK Productions will promote you. You have an open door to come back with any of the projects you're, you're doing. If you just want to stop in and chit chat, we'll be more than happy to, to do that also. Anything that you're doing, if you have a friend that you would like to connect, hopefully your experience with RMK Productions and um, 10 United Podcast Network um, has been pleasurable, you know, from beginning to end. And if you ever want to be a guest back on Talking With Kevin and Son, you are more than welcome. So to my listeners, I want to thank you as always for being loyal followers. And to my listeners, I appreciate you liking and sharing. 
and hopefully you'll come back. All right. This is another episode of Talking with Kevin and Son. As my grandfather always said, when you get to a point in your life that you can help someone else, it is your duty. Reach one, teach one. Adopt this hashtag. Find 1,000 reasons to be kind to someone. I'm your host, Kevin McLemore, and my son, Theo McLemore, and we fade to black. <laughs>